Hey, it's Red J, and today we're going to go over how to win your next open triple triad tournament. Uh, I'm going to be going over some basic principles to winning the game itself, you know, how to actually build your deck, and reviewing select games from tournaments that I played in uh, with some interesting highlight moments. So uh, let's get into, you know, how open tournaments actually work. So it's in the Gold Saucer. Uh, you'll queue up with hopefully eight people. Um, if not, they'll be replaced by NPCs. Uh, at the open tournament official every two hours and it'll be open for 30 minutes. Now once you are accepted uh, you'll be thrown into a card draft itself. Um, now a draft is actually where you'll be making your own deck from pre-selected card bundles and you'll need to choose a card um, from each star ranking so one from five, four, three, two, one. All right and then at that point you'll be uh, battling three opponents to the death. If you don't subscribe right now because I'm pumping out Final Fantasy XIV videos like Mario at his past plumbing job. Ultimately, for each round you do win, you'll get some points for winning and uh, lose points for losing. Um, if you get the highest number of points over those three rounds, uh, you'll win these tournaments. They're very short, very fun, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a great way to play Triple Triad if you don't get enough of it um, out in the open world here. And as a reward, uh, you also get some MGP and some card packs for your collection. So, hey, I would say go for it. It's a lot of fun. And yeah, let's uh, let's get into it. Also, one thing to know is uh, these open tournaments, the most common rule set is to have the standard rules itself. Um, so that's all we'll be focusing on. Sometimes they have special rules in there, but uh, it's not as common. All right, let's see what we get dealt. Okay, so let's go ahead and pause the video here. So the first thing that stands out to me is Sir Emmerich right off the bat in the top row here. Again, we're choosing one card pack um, from each different row here. Now, the reason why Emmerich stands out here, the 1599, is because ultimately, I think what's very strong in draft is holding the corners. So sort of the weakest uh, card or the placement in the board itself is the center. And the reason it's the weakest is because there's four different sides for it to flip from. Um, north, south, south, west, and east. And when it comes to the corners, you only got two sides where it can flip from. And holding a 9-9 nine, nine in the corner, uh, specifically the top right corner here, uh, that's very strong. People aren't going to really be able to flip it. So it, one, establishes that card is never going to flip on the board, as long as you protect the other sides. Two, it has a high chance of flipping any other cards. So immediately right off the bat, that's the card I'm looking at. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and choose Emmerich. That's going to be our first choice. As far as the two-star card, the two stars and, and one stars don't really, really matter. Um, they're not going to be that impactful. Plus, you're going to be playing those cards later at the end of the uh, the game itself. Uh, the reason why is because, you know, you, you ideally want to start off with your stronger cards at the start and then save your weakest for the very last. All right. Um, next here. Uh, looking at the middle row, uh, what immediately stands out is Lucia here because, we, again, we're, it's the idea of the corner here. So we have an 8-8 eight, eight, and nothing else really going on here. Again, we have this vertical 8-7, which just isn't that great. Um, the other card that we can consider is this 1-7-6-7. Seven, seven, uh, but as far as the stats go on it, it's very, very average. In fact, it's more like a from an A to an F rating, I would give it like a C-. minus. Um, it's, it can get beat by a lot of two-star cards. Yeah, I'm just not really happy uh, w with that. So let's go ahead and we're going to pick Lucia. And again, the one-star card doesn't matter at all. Um, realistically, uh, if you're going first, you will have to play it. If you're going second, you never, ever, ever will be playing your uh, one-star card because you only play four cards in that, in that um, matchup. So... That's that's kind of just why one star cards just don't matter. Um, yeah, and so I can I'm already starting to picture out how the game will go. I want to open up with Lucia, which is a strong three star card. Again, um, so eight eight on the corners are pretty much standard for you know the best in slot uh, card you can get at three stars. So um, that's uh, uh, an opening I would often choose here. 
So we have the top right covered by Emmerich, and the bottom right covered by Lucia. And then as our final choice, we have two good cards, uh, Noctis and Raubon here. But uh, it's actually down to one choice. We can't choose Raubon here. And the reason why is because even though it's an Ace-9 and it paints the corner, it kind of uh, clashes with Emmerich, who also paints that same top right corner here. So ultimately, uh, we're going to choose Noctis here um, because it could attack from the top left. And having a seven, even a seven ace combination, if it's in the bottom left hand corner, isn't that bad. Seven isn't great, but it's better than, say, six or below. So, um, yeah, it's a very, very strong choice. I think the, the uh, deck is very clear here for us. We're going to go ahead and lock in that deck. And we're going to start with the first match here. To the first match here. All right, we're going second here. So depending on what the opponent does, uh, our, our highest likely play is playing Lucia down. And the reason why it's not Emmerich is because I'd rather use our three star cards a little bit before four star cards. Three star cards are kind of in the middle road, nice opener baseline, but it doesn't display too much power or use too much of our powerful cards too early on here. So let's go. So we go ahead and put Lucia down just fine. An alternative option was to play Noctis actually in the uh, far left side here because we not only take the top card or top left card, but we set up ourselves so with an ace facing the center and a nine facing the bottom left hand corner, basically where it can't be touched. All right. Um, but again, just Lucius is strong enough here. We have, we have a couple options. We could set up Emmerich in the top right here uh, but ideally I'm just going to go on throughout the two star card because just kind of mirroring the power level that they have out on the board they've only put out their two star card so I'm going to go ahead and mirror put out our two star card and part of the reason why I wanted to place it here is because now this top left card is pretty much locked in in our favor they can never capture it back all right and so we go ahead and go for the double capture even if I'm not I'm not worried because most likely they're going to get a double capture from these two cards. They're never going to capture this um, far right card here. Um, I kind of want to go back and display that board state. Yeah, so realistically, they they use their four star card. Their five star card would have to be something insanely bonkers like ace, ace on the sides and something powerful, some powerful number on the top um, to capture all three cards. But even if that was the case, uh, the worst I could do was tie. Um, so in the case, they capture these two cards, which are the weakest displaying numbers. I can recapture this far left card here with Noctis, have an ace pointed out center, and pretty much I'm locked ahead uh, by one. And that's pretty much the case that happens here. Yep, they use a five star card and now they're just left with their one star card, so. Pretty nice, we, we win with two captures. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and uh, forward through the rest of this tournament because there's only NPCs I play through the rest of it and it's not as uh, <laughs> not as interesting. That's so ultimately I, I won the tournament with uh, three wins, five captures, very, very strong deck uh, composition. So yeah, let's go on to the next tournament because I wanna forward to the interesting matches. All right, for this next tournament, as you can see, we got full eight players here, um, which is very, very, very nice. So we only get uh, human opponents, and that, that's a little bit more fun than just playing against the average NPCs. All right, so here we are at the draft uh, for tournament number two. Now this draft is actually fairly tricky. So right off the bat, let's look work at the uh, look at the top row to see what we can choose here. Um, first off, Hildebrand and Nashu, one eight ace eight, very powerful. Uh, works in the top left corner, top right corner, and definitely works in the top center um, square as well. So very high consideration. We have Raubon, uh, perfect in the top right corner. And then we have Gaius, but the thing is, I don't really care for this um, so much because of Gaius, but I actually care for it because this card over here, the 7633, that's pretty powerful for a two star card and it takes one of the corners which is why i would consider it but the way i'm looking at it right now 
if I had to choose based on what I see alone, it'd be one, two, and then three. That, that'd be my pick order right now. Okay. Um, going on to the second row. And, and again, I don't think we can necessarily eliminate anything from the top row yet until we kind of see the other choices uh, blow here. All right. So uh, immediately what pops out is the Griffin here. We have a strong 8-8 eight, eight card at three stars and then Hilda at um, another another three star at 8-8. Eight, eight. But we can actually eliminate Hilda here. And the reason why is because uh, if we choose Raubon or Hilda here, this directly can uh, directly conflicts with Raubon because it's fighting over the same corner and can conflict with Hilda. So I think the decision is, is a little bit clear here. I would choose the Griffin um, to attack from the bottom left side. And then we come onto the final row. Again, this is uh, a little bit complex. We have a 9-8 strong top right card and then Odin, which is a solid card on the bottom row itself for the same reason as Hildy. So I'm looking for a little bit more flexibility um, with my cards here. Uh, so it makes sense if I were to choose Hildy or Odin, all right? And ultimately, I think what, what I end up going with is uh, Raubon and the Fat Alpha or uh, Fat Chocobo here. And partially the reason why is because for a two-star card, um, I'd rather have the flexibility of a card that can be semi-powerful on every single side here and not just powerful on, on one single side. Um, again, it's just for more flexibility in my games here, uh, but it's very, very, very close between choosing Hildy, Griffin, and then this middle bottom card versus Odin, the Griffin, and then Raubon or Hildebrand. Um, I would say either deck would work fine. Uh, that's just my preference and the reasoning behind why I chose these cards. And this is the deck I ultimately lock in. And one thing that's important to note is if you do go first, um, oftentimes there's an opener where you'll start off with the one star card, your weakest card in the center. And you may say, well, well, why? That's because pretty much you're going to have to play the one star card. Playing it in the center uh, doesn't matter so much because if you're the first player, you always get the last move. And more often than not, the corners are taken and you have a high chance to flip the card in the center if it's not already yours, okay? And with myself choosing a one-star card that has that is vulnerable on both the uh, east and west side, I have the flexibility now for my two-star card, which is likely to come down uh, last or, or second to last and have that uh, take over the middle card here. So that's just some consideration to think about. Okay, so I'm going on to the second game of this tournament. The first round I uh, drew and in a lot of those games, uh, you'll actually draw here. Uh, I think this game displays uh, some kind of cool, cooler moments here. So we do go first. So I'm going to go ahead and start off with that weak card in the center uh, for mentions reason prior. Uh, my alternative play was to play the Griffin in the bottom left hand corner here. All right. so. This is a very strange play to me. Um, pretty much they, they used a four star card against a one star card and left a vulnerable vulnerable area um, in the bottom left hand corner, which allows me to just immediately scoop it up. And now this Uriandra card is pretty much protected. It's not going to get captured or very, very unlikely to get captured because uh, they would require an ace in their five star card there. Um, so. I would say this is kind of a mistake by my opponent. Um, they recapture this ultimately with their five star card, but now they've burned their five star card and their four star card, and they're not ahead in the game, right? And I just recapture it back with Odin. If they were to do this play, I would have recaptured this back with uh, this five star card in the top left corner and left the seven on the side to kind of uh, protect it. And then uh, have, have Uriandra pretty much be in my pocket. Uh, but uh, I think they I think they made a little mistake here. All right, let's uh, go on then. 
So they play their one star card now. Again, the ordering I think is off. Uh, you should probably save that one star card for, or actually because they're second, they shouldn't play that one star card at all. And I play Raubon in the top right corner just to uh, protect the card and have it not get captured at all. So yeah, fairly easy win. And let's go on to the final game here. Okay, on to our third and final match here for this video. All right, we are going second this time. And let's see what our opponent opens up with. All right, so this is a very, very strong opener from them. Two star card that uh, paints the corner with two sevens, very strong numbers. So I don't really have a card that captures it well in the left hand column. So I'm gonna go ahead and take it over with Odin and leave only an eight and a seven exposed. So I would say I'm fairly happy with, with uh, that capture. And this is okay from their side. They go ahead and play Sid and lock up that uh, top left corner. So pretty much I can't touch Sid in, in any way or, you know, most scenarios. So I'm going to go ahead and take the opportunity to actually seal off the seven because I'm afraid that this card can get captured. And I'd rather replace that seven now with an eight. Now only I have eights exposed. So we're pretty much in a very, very good spot. And they already used the four star card. All right, so they go ahead and play their three star. Now, this is probably the most actually one of the, the tougher uh, turns, I would say, for for these line of games here. And I'd like to invite you um, to go ahead and try to figure out exactly what you would do in this situation. All right, so I'll go ahead and let the footage play out um, while I kind of think of the, the different possibilities here. But I, I do have a, a I think it's very strong reasoning as to my next move here. You know, we can play Raubon in the top right corner to secure that card. Uh, maybe we play the, the Chocobo um, in the center. Maybe we play on the sides. And yeah, ultimately, I do lock in the fat Chocobo in the center. Here's why. We want to secure these two cards. We are going to secure Odin and the Griffin. Now these points are forever ours, right? By blocking them both off. Their five-star card can't come down and sweep up both. All right, that's point one. Point two now. If they play a card here on the side or the top side in order to capture back this Chocobo, I can always play Rao Bon, and I have a very high chance of recapturing uh, the Chocobo here and one of the corner cards. So for example, if they play a card in the top center here, right, that captures this Chocobo, I can capture it back with Rao Bond placed right here, and I take the Alpha card in the bottom right hand corner. If they capture the Chocobo on the far right side, I'll place Rao Bond in the top center, capturing Sid and the Chocobo back. Pretty much, I, I'm, I've secured a, a win at this point. There's no way, because we're already one card ahead and I'll flip two cards back in response. And so, you know, pretty much at this point, doesn't matter what they do. I'm gonna go ahead and place my card there. Take uh, take a two card lead. Doesn't matter if they capture it back, we're gonna stay the card ahead. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it for the tournament play here. Uh, all right, so there we go. Uh, two back-to-back -back wins with two Fairly good decks here. We get some MGP and some card packs for it. So again, I'd like to say thank you for watching and appreciate your time. Thanks.